computers. Now, just stay with me. I want you to trust me on this. This may look like a lot of cold hardware, but middle-class people, you're not, you, you don't have, right now you've got to be rich to have one of these things. Sort of. All right. Uh, but your point is that someday this is not going to, you'll be able to have them in your home. Well, it's about like driving another automobile now, so maybe you have to be rich to drive automobiles, too. Yeah. But you do expect the price of this kind of equipment to go down, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Donald Bitzer, Ph.D., Director of Computer-Based Education Research Lab at the University of Illinois at Urbana. Okay, let, give us just some example. Uh, let's try some of the educational tools. You want to try right? some of that? Please, Please do. Yeah, if you can. Okay. Um, well, we're going to turn the lights out here in the studio, and we want to give you an idea of how this computer works. Fancy this now as a as a instrument to assist, uh, say, grammar school kids uh, with lessons. Just, uh, all right, what's going on here? Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is that uh, we discovered that you needed graphics for teaching young children as well as older people. All right. And, uh, Excuse me, that says loading pictures. Picture. Just a minute, please. All right, we'll wait for you. Okay, right. now uh, what that's saying is it needs some characters that uh, weren't on the screen. In this case, uh, it's going to be some characters of little animals and things, but Typically, it might be a Cyrillic alphabet if you're teaching Russian, things that you need to teach some special types of material. All right. Now, it's loaded our terminal with those, and these can be used just like any other key, uh, 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 character or A, B, C, D, or anything else. All right, right, let's get a little closer, Tex, if we could. I want to make sure they see this at home. I want to make sure you can see the... All right, now, watch what happens. Now, does everybody... Can you see that? Do you see what that is? All right, watch what happens. There you go. Apple. Apple. Isn't that terrific? Now watch this. What is it? There's a... Uh, well, that's so small. I just, all right, we all can see that. Can you see this one right here? Get in a little closer if you would, Pat. All right, watch. Watch this. Moon. Turtle. Can you imagine being six and doing this, or three? You've got to get one for your home. Listen, we're, we're going to give it... We're going to... Uh, all right. Three. Um, all right, give me some other. I am fascinated with it. Sorry, give me another display if we could, or well, something, another application. Okay, well, let me give you an example. This sounds like a human, you notice, yeah. instead of a computer. That's because it is one. <laughs> that is, you're hearing a human. Over here in this device is stored messages which the computer can recall. I want to make sure we can and, see them. Everybody right. see that? All right. In playback, and you store 4,096 messages of 22 minutes, and you just drop this in, which is attached to your terminal. Yeah. Just like this. Slide it in. You close it, and now any of those messages is available. Duck. Like that. Now, that's not so important as you'll see later when the computer speaks to you with its own language. All right, let me just do a couple more. I'm sorry. I'm really... This <laughs> knocks me out. Can everybody see that? Maybe a little closer. I think closer. All right, you want to kill some lights in here? Maybe the back lights, Al? I think that's getting in our way, getting in the way of the... Uh, um, oh, we, we've already pushed... You can uh, push it again, and then it'll turn right. it back. Turn it back again. I'll touch it again. Turtle. Go, go either way on it. Right, here's a stagecoach, is it? Mm -hmm. Stagecoach. Now, if you don't happen to like English, we can change the language a little for you. you really? Sure. Uh, let's see. Let's mix the pictures up again for you, okay? Right. And uh, change the language, see if you can recognize it. As soon as the pictures come on again, just touch again and see what you get. All right. Okay. There you go. All right. Here's a... Uh, is a crocodile. What language? Oh, well, we'll find out, huh? Alicotur. Oh. Well, well, let me see if I can read. What language is it? Let me try this. Eple. That's uh, French, isn't it? Touch the turtle. It might give you a clue. Where's the turtle? I can't find the turtle. Um, Please right don't. Now, next row to the bottom on the left-hand side. Far left-hand side. Hult <laughs> pata. Uh, uh, all right, he's a leaf. Live. That's Swedish. Oh, it's Swedish. All right. There's something nice about it. Don't that. tell anybody I couldn't figure that out, all right? Just, <laughs> we'll cut that out of the tape. All right. Uh, okay, uh, with time uh, going, give us just one more example, and we'll come back to this. Okay, well, let me give you an example of combining some of this media okay. together, okay? Suppose that uh, you want to combine pictures, colored pictures, as well as this computer graphics, which we find necessary for teaching and medicine, uh, and also with children. What I've got here now, you see, is a colored picture which comes up from behind and a story. Now, we call these interactive stories. So right. if a child can read it, that's fine. But if he can't, he can say, gee, what is this animal? Glump. Glump, it said. Now, uh, All right, can we get a little closer? I want to make sure, sure. they can see this. Um, we're really, uh, we this is an electronic uh, miracle just to be able to, all right, you're going to. Read the whole line. Pictures by Wayne Wilson. You say, Wayne who? 
Let's touch the name. Wilson. Uh, Did you do it? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Uh, all right, let's try that one more time. Uh, on the next page, just touch uh, yeah, the letter right, square. So you're going to turn the page here. Uh -huh. Touch pan, it. Pan right, if you would. Right there. All right, there's the page. And it changes the slide up on top. Okay, now let's... Uh, touch the top line, right, for the, example. The top line says, once upon a time there was a glump. All right, let me just try. Now touch the whole line oh, over the left. Once upon a time there was a glump. Now listen. Once upon a time there was a what? Glump. You got it. <laughs> Uh, now let's see. The, oh, now look. Now all right. He he looked like a bush made out of hair. Now watch this. He looked like a brush made out of hair. That didn't sound like bush, did it? Sound like brush. Just touch the word. Bush. That's better. He got it straightened out. Uh, why don't you go to the? Uh... You mean the computer errors too? Huh? All right. Okay. The, <laughs> no, I knew. Right. The okay. The story continues. Right. This is a story about a poor little glump, and he has a problem. I'll go on. Namely, that uh, his problem is that the. Uh, he slept wherever he happened to be when night came. Now, we call these interactive stories, and you'll see why in a moment. Sometimes he slept in the tree, and the... That was cold and drafty in the wintertime. We understand that from this winter. Sure. And sometimes he slept under the bush, and the... But the bushes let the rain in. And then sometimes he slept beside the pond. You see, he has all kinds of trouble. Then the mosquitoes bit him. Now, actually, there's no trouble with the tail. What do you think he needs? A tie, a boat, or a house? Uh, he needs a house. Oh, come on. All right, all right, a tie. He needs a tie. Oh, a boat, sure. So the computer, you see, takes off in that direction. So the glump bought a new tie. Oh, wow. wow. You look groovy. You look groovy. So the child is right expensive. or wrong, you see. He oh, okay, now wait a minute. Go back. What if I choose something else? Well, uh, you can, can you go back? Can you reverse the page? You mean you want to go back to the choices again? Yeah. yeah. All right. I want, what do you want to oh. A boat? Listen, we got this audience totally involved. In can you imagine? And, and it's a piece of hardware. Yes. I'm beginning to, I don't love it, but I'm very fond of it. Uh, all right, let's try, uh, let me try, uh, let me push uh, boat, all right? Yeah. All right. So the glump, <laughs> now look at this. So the glump bought a boat. <laughs> In the boat, the glove could get away from the mosquitoes. <laughs> but you see, he has problems yet. But the boat, but does the boat keep you warm in the winter? Oh. <laughs> Let's touch it on the line underneath. Yeah. But does a boat keep you warm in the winter? Does a boat keep you dry in the rain? Glump was still unhappy. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, still so unhappy. Go. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, what would you like to have the glump do? <laughs> Should the glump get a tie, a boat, or a house? Watch how good little Philly does. <laughs> oh, but you should... That's it, said the glump. What I need is a house. <laughs> Oh, we can go on and on. Oh, sure. But wait, yelled the glump. I don't know how to build a house. I have no idea how all to build right. a house. We'll be here all day. But I, listen, I'm really concerned about the glump. Uh, but we'll return to the glump. Now, there are other, obviously, other applications to this. The whole point here is that computer, the technology is here. Uh, it's immediately apparent the, the educational value of an instrument like this. Yes, there's, there's a number of areas that's been experimented with, ranging from preschool all the way through graduate school work, okay. and in all cases there, there appears to be a great deal of merit. Okay. Now, the, this, this computer can also serve... Uh, I'm... Let me just put it this way. It's hot in here, right? Right. And, uh, and I'm thirsty. Oh, is that right? All right. Well, let's see what we can do here uh, about that. Now we can uh, ask the computer to help you here. Let's say uh, we may have to kill those lights just for a moment because I want to see this screen if we can. Bring those lights down a little bit. What is it saying here now? What do you have to say for yourself? A Rock answers. Bring Phil some water. Well, now what I want to do is uh, let the computer. A Rock, bring Phil some water. Now that's the computer speaking. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
now in touch with Donahue. On this morning's Donahue, we'll explore home computers and how they will change the lives of millions of Americans within the next five to ten years. This program was recorded earlier for playback at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, I want this time to introduce one of the most uh, controversial guests we've ever had in the history of our show. Would you welcome once again, A-Rock, please. Make him feel welcome. Uh, I, uh, A-Rock, come on in here. And uh, first of all, I'll... I'll uh, okay, that's good enough right there. Here uh, is your water, sir. Thank you. A-Rock, you're welcome. Uh, you're welcome too. Yeah. A-Rock, I'm just amazed that uh, it's your ability. Is the just hamming it up a bit? Uh, you're just hamming it up again. Yes, that's. We're used to that here on our show. Uh, have you thought about maybe getting your own talk show? No, sir. Oh, that's encouraging. Anybody have any questions for A-Rock? Uh, what'd you like to? Excuse me, just a moment. Here. Uh, wait a minute. Move, A-Rock. Hey, Rock, you do windows. Boy, that's a tough one. I'm still a little clumsy. Oh, you're a little clumsy, so you don't want to risk uh, being outside on the ladder with the window. All right. All right. Anybody else? Excuse me. Wait a minute. I guess. Hey, I just... Oh, I pulled it. No, the mic is dead. Wonderful. Like to use uh, where's, uh, <laughs> hey, Rock, our mic went dead. How's that? Now we're on? Hey, Rock, I'm sorry, our mic went dead. It's just another example of uh, here in the finite world of human beings, errors happen, mistakes are made, and sometimes hardware doesn't work. Does that ever happen with you? Oh, yes. Once in a while, I blow a transistor or two. You blow a transistor or two? All right. Yes. Uh, a lady in the audience wanted to know if you did Windows. I don't think the folks at home heard us. No, I am too clumsy at this point. Oh, all right. We have some more questions for you. Can you you're, not, you're not in a hurry, are you? No, sir. All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> yes. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Does he mow lawns? <laughs> A-Rock, wait a minute. A-Rock, do you mow lawns? <laughs> no. You don't? No, I cannot, but I do the vacuuming around the house. Take the dog for a walk. Uh, yeah. Take out the garbage and bring in the mail. Can you imagine I'm doing a whole show with a... Yeah. Does he date? Uh, do, you, do you date A-Rock? Don't get nervous now. Uh, all right. What was the question? Uh, do you date? Do you date? Uh, do you have a relationship? No, but I like pretty girls. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yes. Do you, do, do, you, do you have to have a, a person operating you all the time, or can you buy the house and leave you alone to do all the work? Well, not exactly. I can be programmed also. I have a memory tape. I see. What? You could, you could set something at 8 o'clock in the morning, and at 5 o'clock at night it would be all done when you come back. No, we're not that far advanced yet. Okay. Uh, we thank you for your honesty, uh, A. Rock. We'd like to uh, we'd like you to introduce now a very close friend of yours, Ben Scora. Would you welcome him, please? Ben, you, you can remain seated right there in front of us. Here's how it works. Um, would you like to try working it? Uh, I can go up there with it, with uh, you. Uh, okay, well, I want to set it up first. I, I'm afraid it would take too much time for me to switch seats with you here. But first, explain to me, you are an electronic enthusiast. That's your... Uh, uh, right. And uh, your interest is it's a hobby? Uh, sort of. I'm a psychotherapist. I do hypnosis. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and this is your way of what? Escaping from the daily routine of... Uh... Sort of, or expressing myself. I, I uh, have an electronic house uh, that I have built, and uh, it's just a way of relaxing, get away from the right. other type of thing. Uh, I want to, can you see that uh, monitor up there? Because I want you to do some home movies for us now. We've taken some videotape or film of your home. Oh, okay. All right, I want to show you. This is the house that you've got to have, all right? If you would roll that, uh, roll that film for us, I want to show you Ben Scora's home. This is just, uh, what is that, the living room? Yeah, and that's the pits there. Uh, 
that I'm sitting in, and in a while I'll revolve out to the patio. All right. There I go. Oh. <laughs> so who? If you don't like your guest, you just push the button. <laughs> All right. Uh, actually, you'll be totally outside now at the end of this 360-degree uh, rotation. Oh, it's a 180, I guess. 180. 180. All right. Very nice. The whole room moves outside. Can you imagine sitting down and say, hi, Ben, how are you? After three drinks, suddenly, there you go. <laughs> All right, now you're outside, huh? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. okay. And you installed this yourself? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. You like it? Yeah. Uh, now, what's this, Ben? What's this? Oh, that's the bar coming out of the wall. All of these things are operated by touchtone. Uh, at that point, I, was, uh, I picked up the telephone and made all of these things operate by telephone. Using the telephone, you meant? Oh, oh, now, is this a light? This is the light that follows you, does it? Yes, it does. <laughs> in other words, anywhere you go in the room and sit down, the light will be there. Yes. All right, now we're going to go to the kitchen after... Uh, I'm in the process of building the kitchen, so uh, there is the... Uh... Now, uh, the cabinet above there is a retractable cabinet. It's coming down at this point, so you don't have to reach up for things. And it's elect all electronically operated. And next you'll see one of the walls open up into a storage area, and this is the wall here. And now we're going into the bedroom at this point. Uh, there is the bedroom, and uh, in a few minutes you'll see the dresser separate and the door open, going into the washroom. <laughs> You're not really drunk, the dressers are moving. <laughs> well, all right. You like it? <laughs> uh, all right. Or, uh, uh, A Rock, do you live in that? Uh, does A Rock live in the house? Uh, Yes, sir. He you, made me to push the push button. Oh, I see. You go around and push. Can you I imagine? I think he's lazy. He's lazy. I see. Can you imagine a power failure in that place? Uh, all right. Now I know. Uh, who, is anybody with a question for? <laughs> uh, ben Scora is uh, is responsible for A Rock. We've already established that. A Rock, spelled backwards, is uh, Scora without the S. Okay, that explains the. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I would like to know if it's practical for a family with small children to have a computer or a robot, yeah. you know. What do you, uh, how, maybe you better handle I that. I can answer oh. through him. Uh, no, it's not practical at this time. Uh, it isn't practical? No. All right, why? It would be a little too dangerous because he does weigh 275 pounds, and if he pinned somebody up against the wall, they'd know it. Right. All right. Uh, okay, wait a minute. Hey, Rock, can, you, can I get by here? Do you mind? I mean, it is my show. Certainly. Huh? All right. All right. If you'll be just good enough to... Oh, all right. That's, no, I want to go this way, so maybe you better come over here, hey, Rock. Do you want to just kind of walk over there for me, if you will? All right, thank you very much. Far be it for me to ask... Uh, you to move if it wasn't important. Yes. Want to stand? That's all right. Mm -hmm. All right. How long do you think it'll be before we have electronic devices in our home? Let me bring uh, Dr. Uh, Bitzer in on that. Uh, what's the what's the future on this thing? Well, it depends what you mean uh, having the robot do. Uh, there there are robots in use in industry today where the function is very simple: move, follow the movement, and repeat it, and weld things. And you have robots which look at scenes. Uh, are very simple. For example, a, a cube and a square and a block and pick out which one and stack them on top of each other. That's the status in the research lab. But I don't think that's what you meant. If you have a complicated scene like you're going to tell your robot to drive down to the grocery store, for you, and here's the shopping list, well, as long as I guess longer than I'm going to have to live in order to prove I may be wrong, uh, say 30 years, that may be true. But if you want to go with it, 
you'll probably want to wait 60 years because it's a tough job. All right. Just give us, all right, just give us some of the uh, possible applications for the housewife, for example, within the next decade. Just give us some. Probably within the next five to ten years, uh, you'll be able to have computers in your home which will uh, essentially be terminals attached to a worldwide network. So if you want to talk to your friend, you'll not only be able to talk to them, but send grocery lists or uh, lists of, of guests back and forth. You'll be able to call people and say, show me what you're doing today. And it will uh, be able to show you the kinds of work that you're doing. You'll be able to make up uh, uh, grocery lists and say, where should I go shopping to get the minimum, um, pay a minimum amount of cash to get the goods which I want today in these quantities. And the computer will not only, in other words, you'll choose all the items that you need, all right? Amounts. Now you press, you put all that in, you, uh, right. asparagus, steak, whatever it is, potatoes, corn, cereal, put it all in the thing. Okay. Now you punch what, A and P, all right? Well, you probably say, I want to buy this, and it would look around and see which has got the best deals for you. All over the, and, and, and also All factor in the gas mileage to get there. That's right, so you could minimize your cost. So and coming back will tell you which store to go to for the, for the most bargains. Isn't that something? Uh, anything else, the gee whiz stuff? That well, we are, uh, right now in the laboratories, we're working on very large memories, which will be able to store information of, of the quantity of two million volume libraries you know that's those are large libraries and so instead of having to have these libraries in your home you'll be able to push a button and say i'm interested in all places where it says this that but not the other it'll search that two million volumes in a fraction of a second say here are the things where these things are mentioned and would you like to read them and so you can sit there at your terminal and read them so those kind of services will be available uh you may want to know what kind of plants will do best according to the ge your geography Go to your computer. Oh, now, instructions. Right. Now, your computer is a little black box in the kitchen, right? With a keyboard on it? A, a typewriter? Key? Well, there are computers that are little black boxes that you can put in the kitchen, but typically, in order to be very useful, those computers are also attached to larger computers. I know that. that that's what I... things attached now, to them. That's right. Just, uh, they'll just be little black boxes. So, so all the hardware is not in your house. You merely have a terminal to that's, the multi-million dollar hardware. That's correct. And the terminals today can be put in a briefcase. You just carry them with you. And, uh, without right. even opening the case of the briefcase, you can right. look at it. And, right. Yeah. Uh, A-Rock, would you kindly tell our audience that uh, we'll be back in just a moment? We, we will be back in just a moment. We're talking about the uh, computer, computer application, computer technology, how close we are, how far away, when it's going to happen, and as we've seen on the show, it's already here. All right, we're back. Uh, Dr. Bitzer. I'd like to know how much this is going to cost to put one of these in your home. Well, today, it uh, costs, if you could get it by the hour, would be about $2 per hour of use that you, that you were connected, uh, providing you live close enough to the computer that you didn't have to pay a long-distance phone line. But my guess is that in the future, you'll be able to buy a terminal that will do what you want for somewhere like a thousand dollars and we're talking about five ten years and uh, for fifteen or twenty cents an hour be able to go in and get entertainment or learn a foreign language before you go to another country all these kinds of things that should be relatively inexpensive less expensive than going somewhere else yes uh, i have a twelve and a half year old son who's very into computers and he's now saving his money diligently to buy the pet computer and yes. that's one company um, do you think it's a wise investment for six or eight hundred dollars <laughs> He loves, the idea. he loves the idea of it, and he knows how to program things. Well, I think that, uh, I, I don't think that for what you would call naive users of computers, that, that those would be too helpful because you have to be very clever to make them do useful things at this stage. However, if your interest is in computers and you're interested in learning about computers rather than being a user, then computers of that type, I think, can be of value and will help liter uh, give computer literacy to our children. Is it possible that in the near future we'll be able to use computers in uh, shopping centers or commercially located areas? For what purpose? Well, oh, you mean to do? I see. Rent them. Go in and just. Yes. Do, I see. Yeah. Yes, I think so. There are a number of uh, shopping centers at the present time who are, in fact, renting this, this kind of service and making it available for instruction for students as well as for game playing. Now, won't I also be able, as a to a computer, go to the computer in my kitchen or wherever it happens to be? program it and get my check balance. 
<laughs> or, or someone else go in and... Uh... Well, that's what I wondered about. Uh, is, this a, is there a privacy problem here? Well, privacy, there are two aspects of the privacy problem which uh, make life difficult. One is it uh, demands that you keep from uh, other people the secrets which you're supposed to keep from them, but there's also a companion law that insists that you tell people things if, that they have the right to know. And, of course, the problem is uh, keeping those two separate, that you don't tell the wrong things or the right things for the wrong people. All right. Can we have... Uh, we better move in here. Let's, let's try one more... Uh... Uh, we're going to have to get the camera in here. And tell me what you're, what you're planning okay, to do. Okay, what we're going to do here is, uh, the question frequently comes up is, you know, can computers think? Or can computers understand? Yeah. In fact, when we program, uh, when most people program the system here, the Plato system, uh, they put in concepts rather than answers. So the computer can actually deal with a concept, even though it may be a particular problem that you brought up that it has never seen before, all or right. the programmer. Okay. And uh, when you do that in the math and science areas, people say, well, sure, that's all very precise. Now what I'm going to do... Make a sentence. Touch the words you want, then press next. And we're going to be... From, to, over, the, granite, car, tree, boy, dog, house, cat, girl, Carries, walks, runs, jumps, erase, fail from A level, next. All right. Now we can write sentences and the computer will try to analyze these sentences and make up a play on our screen. So if you watch the screen, you should be able to see what you wrote, even if it's sort of nonsense. All right. So we write something like this. Uh, oh, let's see if I can find a sentence here, something like this. Car, runs, over. Uh, well, let's see here. Girl. From. The. Rabbit. To. The. Tree. House. Now, that's a fairly complicated sentence. Well, the right? car runs over the girl from the rabbit to the tree house. Right. <laughs> All right. That's like this. The car runs over the girl from the rabbit to the tree house. And there you see. <laughs> Holy cow, look at that. Isn't that incredible? A v actual animated visual display of the sentence that you created, however discompobulated, huh? That's correct. So, it may not make sense. That is, you could write a sentence that uh, may not make sense to you, but it might make sense to the person who wrote it. You might say... Uh, three. Jumps. Over. The. Dog. No, somebody may oh, have... Wait a minute. Uh, the, okay, the sentence... I just want to get a little tighter in here if we can't. Oh, I shouldn't have touched that. It's all right. All right. The tree jumps over the dog. All right, now let's do it. Watch now. The tree jumps over the dog. <laughs> that is something. I'm fascinated. Now, you could write something that, uh, that uh, no one would understand, including the computer. For example... Uh, uh, Girl walks over carries to from. All right, the girl walks over carries to from. Sorry, I do not understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just try one. Now, how do I? Okay, you get Let right me out just of there. Try one. All right. So you want to try your own? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Just touch All the right. words. Oh, uh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> how am I going to do this? Uh, let me see. Uh, All right, the, where's the? Uh, the um, uh, car, car um, jumps, jumps uh, over, over no. the, the. Now, how many? Can I continue? Sure. Rabbit, rabbit, uh, house, uh, and, and can I? Oh, there's no and. There's no, no, no uh, rabbit. Uh, two or no? Wait a minute. Car jumps over the rabbit. Uh, and can I put runs? No, it's the, uh, the car. Huh? So from the car jumps over the rabbit. From mm -hmm. is that all right? Sure. From 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 the, the house. House. The car jumps over the rabbit from the house. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Wait a minute. Can I put? Just can I continue? Just two more. Or, uh, there's Hi. a character limitation Hi. here. So two two the. the Girl. 
girl. Oh, the car it. jumps over the rabbit from the house to the girl. Mm -hmm. All right? Are we ready for this? <laughs> and push next? All right. The car jumps over the rabbit from the house to the girl. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. From the house over the rabbit to the girl. Well, there are things that... Uh, <laughs> That's the darndest thing I've ever seen in my life. Well, there are problems you understand with the English language. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, if you write something like uh, this. Uh, let's see, let's take this one. The, uh, Wait. Runs. Two. Uh, cat. This is an adult program? Yeah. Well, you see, you can uh, confuse things. The boy right? runs to the cat. Now, you're going to give me an X-rated program. Oh, oh <laughs> All right. Now, okay, but now just to show you that, <laughs> just to show you that, uh, that's got it. So going to the cat house. <laughs> well, you see, we lost a little in the translation. Yeah. <laughs> that's the problem. Uh, but, uh, uh, Somewhere out there in America, there's a person who's saying only on that program would he turn sex into a computer. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. Dr. Donald Bitzer is director of the Computer-Based Educational Research Lab at uh, the University of Illinois at Urbana. And we thank you and uh, Ben Scora for your, who's the responsible for uh, AROC. And we'll, we're talking about computers, their application, how soon they're going to be here, what, the, what they mean to us. I was just wondering when uh, you were showing the program, the computers that were programmed and saying that, for example, with the grocery shopping, you know, you could use it for this type thing. Do you have to feed that information into the computer like every week or is it programmed when you buy a computer like that or how would that work? Because many things change and right. it would seem like you'd have to keep changing the, what's that, programmed. That's the it. advantage of not just having a little computer in your home where you're isolated and it's all alone. When you have a network of computers, you would have the network which would furnish that service. They would do the programming of the information and then everybody would have access to that same amount of information without having to do it themselves. We have 3,000 people today that feed information into our system. Yep. And they generate a lot of information. I would uh, seem that the kids are awfully lazy now. Some of them are not reading at third grade level when they're in seventh grade. Yes. That this computerized business is going to make them even lazier and uh, I can't see how it's, it looks like a lot of fun and games. I probably enjoy it more than the kids because I've already been to school. But it's okay if they enjoy it, isn't it? Well, yeah, but Jesus, with this television and this, that, and the other thing, holy. You want them to suffer a little, huh? Heck no. I remember being a kid, too, and wanting to have fun. Yeah, but the point is, though, if it's fun, isn't it going to be more useful and more instructive? I can't really see that. Uh, I don't. I can't see that it's doing anything except for funsy games for adults, more or less. Don't you think direct contact with the teacher, uh, student, businesses? Well, we're not going to, this is not going to replace teachers, huh? Oh, let's hope not. I'm a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> no, on the contrary, it's an aid to the teachers. You see, the problem with teaching today is that we can't get the job done. You pointed it out in your question. And we need help for the teacher, just like we've given people in industry help with machines to produce more. And so the idea of the computer is to give the teacher help. And if you don't think the students will work while they're at the terminal, contrast, con contrary to watching something which is passive, they have to sit there constantly and do a great deal of work, uh, uh, intera interacting with the computer. It's not a passive function, and they work very hard, and they concentrate very hard. You can walk into a computerized classroom, and you have to shake them to get their attention. Yeah. What? Has this been tested in any classroom situation? Oh, yes. We run in about 185 classrooms right now around the country. Are the students doing better? Are the students doing better? And, and, and they never do worse. They seem to do as equal or better. And in some cases, in the elementary math areas, they can show gains that are almost twice as large as those in the ordinary classroom. Yes. That is, uh, you can gain two years for every one year. On a Very little time. On a more practical basis in, in your household, can a computer aid in the preparation of uh, meals? Can a computer aid in the preparation of meals? 
Well, you can attach anything you want into the back of your terminal. You can build it, buy it, whatever you wish. And if you want to write a program that you will trust to the computer to run that device, that's fine. Yeah. In the wrong hands, could AROC be dangerous? Could somebody come program him to do bodily harm or rob a bank? So well, AROC's father, please stand and answer this question. <laughs> ben Scora, responsible for AROC. This better be good, too, Ben. We're looking at you. I made a statement before uh, that it would not be, it would be a little dangerous. Thing. Uh, is that mic on? Is Ben's mic? Can we turn the mic on? Go ahead, Ben. Let's try it again. I, I made a statement before that it would be a little dangerous to have air rock around small children. It's not working. Well, this is good. This is one of those shows, A-Rock. Um, I have no idea why we've lost two mics in one show, but you have a question. Or you had an answer for her question. Uh, I, I made a statement before that it would be a little dangerous to have a big machine like that around the house uh, yeah. because of his weight and uh, if they did push the wrong buttons. He does have safety devices on him, but not total. Uh, I do have a small uh, robot now that I'm almost completed with that does have a microprocessor and a type of equipment that he's working with, and he will have uh, more in the uh, artificial intelligence area. Artificial? Where he will be able to think for himself. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes. I'm a teacher, and I've seen some abuse with instruments of less sophisticated value yes. and I'd like to know where teachers can learn how to successfully use them where do you take courses for this because I don't know of too many colleges that offer uh, a big the, program yes the larger some of the larger universities now offer courses in education on how to use educational technology such as computers in their classrooms uh, there is no substitute, of course, for being in a real classroom with some computers to understand what the problems and prospects are with such devices. And uh, as, as these things get less expensive, more and more classrooms will have this option, and the teachers in the classrooms will have chances to use these kinds of, of devices. But it seems to take uh, a lot of people to supervise, I'm talking elementary, mm -hmm. primary level. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, with cassettes and so they don't break the equipment because they abuse it, they're so little. That's, that's the reason it's nice to have it all under computer control so that the slides and uh, the, all, all the devices are not being managed by humans but instead being managed by computers. Yes. How long will it Phil, it is time for a break. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for a break. I, we'll be back in just a moment. Thank you, A-Rock. with uh, Dr. Bitzer of the University of Illinois at Urbana. Donald Bitzer, PhD, is director of the Computer-Based Education Research Lab at the uh, University of Illinois. Also at hand is uh, Ben Scora, who's an electronic enthusiast and also uh, is responsible for AROC. Somebody said, uh, can, can AROC do housework? He can? Some of it. All right, give me just an example of AROC's capacity here, is it? All right. Oh, I have to turn the vacuum on? Oh, excuse me. All right, wait, wait a minute. It's up on top. Oh, oh. oh, it's in the handle. It all right, all right. Uh, all right. Look at that. What do you think? Watch it. to take a rock home anybody uh, uh, all right wait oh I got turned off excuse me gee the vacuum cleaner I have at home is down here see and that's the reason huh what what <laughs> I'll bet he said uh, just okay we're gonna get you we got you got a thousand questions all right let me take a couple of these because sure. they're really yes ma'am better stay there because we're gonna get back do you have to spend your time operating the robot so you're not free to do something else no, he can be. Yeah. Uh, no, but there's no mic over there. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, he can be programmed to do these things, so you don't have to attend him with this. The only time I use this is when I send him out with the dog, because the even the computer don't know when a dog has to or doesn't. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You want to stand? Yeah. 
I'm interested in that house. I'm curious how it's powered and if there's a backup system. Yeah, is it, is it powered and have you ever blown a fuse yeah, at that place? Uh, you have what? We have a standby uh, power plant that yeah. if anything fails, it goes automatically onto standby. All right, but you must consume a lot of electricity. The bills are high. All right. All right. Just let me, uh, let me give you, it, it's my luck that he has no microphone, so I'm losing weight trying to get back and forth with, let me try this here. Uh, I just want to show you one more application of this uh, unit here, Dr. Uh, Bitzer. Yes, well, you ask what can it do, say, in the fine and applied arts area where uh, you don't normally think of computers helping you out. Uh, in the teaching of music, it became important that the computer be able to play music which you put together. As, as, so, uh, for example... Now, right, but, uh, you want the sting on there? Or oh, the entertainer? Oh, is it alphabetical? No. All right. Would you like another one? Yeah. What would you like to play? I now, want... While we're playing it, why don't we... Uh, uh, do the following. Uh, it would be awfully nice if at the same time we uh, heard the music, if we could also uh, see it. is this connected to the world? Can you, can you demonstrate This that? is connected by an ordinary phone line, in fact about one-eighth of a phone line, which out of your building here, yeah. down to uh, Champaign-Urbana by dial-up. Okay. And it's uh, then, all the lines which come in, which number in like 1,100 uh, phone lines, are now connected together so you can virtually contact anywhere in the world and see what they're doing. All right, can we do that? Oh, sure, if we'd like to try one to see if I can find someone who uh, would be willing to talk. I see I got some electronic mail service, but I don't want to read my mail on the air, so we'll, uh, <laughs> so we'll skip by that. But uh, let me see if I can call someone by saying I want to talk, and this will be, oh, someone just called me, but we'll ignore it. If I can. All right. Hey, here, they're still calling me here. Let me just say I want, I refuse to talk to them. I'm going to say uh, reject. And I just told them too bad. Yeah. Busy. Okay, I took care of them, you see. Now I'll go back and make my call to a guy. Let's see if we can get a hold of some physicist somewhere. His name is Kane. And he's a physicist, and I'll let the computer find him. The computer's looking for him and has already found him and is calling him just like I was being called. That was just an accidental call. I didn't know I was on this program. It says, oh, and it told him who I was in case he wanted to reject the call. I All right, him. hi, Dr. Bitzer, it says. Hi, I better tell him right away, running live uh, on the... Uh, live on the uh, TV. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's right. You better let him know we're on the too. You, uh, <laughs> you connect and... Uh, show uh, something like a grade book, since there might be some teachers interested in how things are kept. All right, how do we know where he is? Well, we don't. He may be in a phone booth. Sure, As he long says. as he's online somewhere, we can ask him. You are now, now in monitor mode. Which means, you see, I'm not running this terminal anymore. We are looking at what is on his terminal. Now, why do we want to do this? Well, suppose your student's 2,000 miles away from you and needs help. You say, I've got to look over his shoulder to help him, like, he, like walking down the aisle in the classroom. Well, we are now looking, he says, uh, uh, we're now looking at the uh, terminal, which is not here, but the, well, the terminal's here, but yeah. the data, which is coming out of another place in the world. Yeah, and being displayed for us. And being displayed for us. And I've asked him if he would show us the distribution, the question came up on grades in our in classrooms, the distribution of grades in a physics class. I can't show this data. It's not mine. It's not my privilege. Only he can show it. And here you see the computer's gone through, taken the record books, and is plotting the data. And I hope it doesn't put any names right. on it. Right. Before we break... You know, we don't want to know who's doing this. Right. Now, this is, the, this is the graph readout of the grade scores of a certain class. That is what is on his screen, and that's what he is right. doing at this moment somewhere else. Ask else. him where he is. Okay. Can you do that? Sure, I can talk to him at the same time. I hope so. Let's see. Uh, where are nope. you now? Let's see what he says. And he can talk to the... In the physics, Plato... Class. He's teaching class. We won't bear not Classroom in, oh, in Urbana. Yeah, well, in we Urbana. don't want to disturb him too okay, long. Okay, well, uh, thank you for the... Okay, let me just say, uh, 
thank uh, you uh, for uh, your help. Bye uh, for now. And we push one button, and you see, what we're doing now is we're back where we were before, ready to read my electronic Now, mail. your point here is that all of us will have this capability at some time in the future. Yes, and that's not so far off. Uh, we're talking about maybe a million terminals by 1985 in the homes. We'll be back in just a moment. Mm. Yes, Dr. Pitzer, yes. In years to come, when we do get a computer in our house, if something goes wrong with this, is it something that we'd be able to fix at home or are we going to have to send this thing out for a couple months? Are we going to be equipped to look maybe in a manual or something and be able to fix it? I, I think that the maintenance of your terminal, computer terminal, will be very much like the maintenance of your TV sets. Some of us are brave enough to try, other of us rather take it in. But I would hope that the reliability would be uh, equal or better than the present TV yes. sets. In your estimation, how many various functions will this home computer have? It will be limited probably by the imagination of the users who contribute to new functions as well as use old functions. And that's really our job, is to make sure that it's not technology that limits uh, what we do, but instead it's the imagination of the users. And let's hope that the people who use them, use them for the betterment of everybody. And let's hope also that it doesn't draw another barrier between us and communicating with each other. We hope it improves it. Thanks very much, Ben, and thank you, Dr. Bitzer. I really pleased to be our thanks to everybody at the University of Illinois at Urbana. I'm glad you were with us, and I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, A Rock. Services provided and promotional fees paid by the new Ford Fairmont wagon. Built for today, but designed for the years ahead. The Ford in your future. Test drive it now. Fairmont, the newest, better idea from the Wagon Master. On the next Donahue, Siamese twins, the world's largest twins, and one of the world's tallest women come to talk about how they feel about themselves and why we call them freaks. Some of our fellow human beings on our next